giver of death, our help in every time of trouble. Comfort us who mourn and give us grace in the presence of death to worship you, that we may have sure hope of eternal life and be enabled to put our whole trust in your goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please join me or us as we sing. greatly to be praised and his greatness is unsearchable my mouth will speak the praise of the lord and let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever psalm 145 on behalf of the family and friends i welcome you to the funeral service 
of Mark Christopher Batchelor, known to many fondly as Batch. We all know he was a great footballer in this beloved country. He was a very colorful character. And whenever I had the opportunity to travel around with him, many, many, many folk recognized him and would greet him fondly. God's word says we should rejoice with those that rejoice and weep with those that weep. And today we weep tears of sadness for our beloved brother. At the same time, we rejoice in the hope of glory Mark now enjoys in the presence of Jesus. And I was privileged to walk that path with him. I'm going to say a few words uh, from the scriptures and then a bit about Mark. But it's a, it's a mystery. Life is a mystery. And may I suggest that you and I live life with a, a bit of mystery. There's many questions we cannot answer. Why did Batch die? Why did God allow it? We don't know. There's no answers to that. We will know one day, but while we live on this earth, there's much we don't know. But we take comfort in the scriptures. In the gospel of Matthew chapter 10, verse 28, it says this, do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet one of them, not one of them, will fall to the ground outside of your father's care. And even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You're worth more than sparrows. Whoever acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge him before my father in heaven. But whoever disowns me before others, I will disown before my father in heaven. So we take a lot of scripture, a lot of uh, comfort in that scripture. And so did Batch. And he put his faith in the Lord. At many funerals, people will speak and talk about how good the person that deceased is. And I'm not going to do that today. I'm not going to say Batch was good. He wasn't good. He was bad. Like you and like me. You see, when we compare ourselves with one another, there's goodness. But when we compare ourselves with God, none of us are good. None of us are perfect. And uh, Batch was fully aware of that, and so have I been for the 33 years that I've walked with the Lord. So we're here this morning, this afternoon, to pay our respects to Mark Batchelor, to celebrate him and thank God for him. We're all looking for mercy, whether we acknowledge it or not. And so... It was a privilege to have walked this road of mercy and redemption with Mark. He came to our church, Four Ways Community Church, and he found peace there. He found some redemption there, and it was our delight. He came into our church about four years ago, and uh, when he walked into the church with a friend, I thought to myself, because I, I recognized him, I thought to myself, here we go. This is going to be interesting, and <laughs> it was very interesting journey indeed. I miss Mark parking at church every Sunday on the middle, on the line. So he would take up two bays. The attendants would always complain to me. I'd say, just relax. It's only, <laughs> we've got three Sunday morning meetings. He comes to the early one. There's not so many people. Just relax. They would remind me, he's your buddy. I said, you're right. He's my buddy. I remember him, or miss him, sneaking in late. This is the, the team. This is the music team behind me that leads us every Sunday. My son Mark, also Mark, uh, leading. And uh, Batch the one time came to me. He said, uh, he said, Pastor T, he called me Pastor T. You're welcome to call me Tony. He said to me, there's something wrong with me. So I said, Batch, what's, what's the deal? What's wrong with you? He said, whenever I sing, I feel like crying. I said, just relax, buddy. That's the Lord working on you. But you know, he was very sneaky. He used to sneak in to the meeting after the music and then hear me preach, and then he would go. But I thought, no, I'm going to catch this boy out. At the end of the one meeting, I called my son Mark up to come and sing at the end of the meeting, and there's Batch stuck in the corner. He couldn't get out, and he had to sing. Early on in Mark's uh, journey with us, I, in fact, called my son Mark. I said, Mark, just come up and sing, please. 
and Bash thought I was calling him. He panicked. He almost ran out of the church. But uh, I miss him calling me and texting me and voice noting me a thousand times every day. Wait, <laughs> am I right? I miss helping him reconcile with those that he had beef with. And I had some success, fortunately. Unfortunately, not with others. And I must say, Warren, I need to say this publicly. Um, Mark and I spoke about you often because part of our journey was to bring reconciliation to everyone. And we spoke fondly of you. He had reconciled whatever differences he had in his heart with you. He regretted the way he treated you at times. And he was on his way to full reconciliation. You'll have to do that with him in heaven one day. But know that he loved you dearly. I miss him responding to the message almost every single Sunday. At the end of my sermon, I would ask if there's anyone that needed prayer. And most Sundays, Batch would stand at the back or sit at the back. He was the first to put his hand up. He was the first to respond because he knew the mercy that he required. I'm thankful that I had a small part to play in his plan of redemption. Today, he is with Jesus in peace. No more hustling, no more fighting, no more chasing, no more proving himself, no more searching, no more struggling. He's at peace. Amen. I would now like to call Mark's brother Warren up to pay tribute. Thank you. Ooh, um, just hope I can keep this together. Um, well, on behalf of Sherry and the family, um, firstly, thank you everybody for taking the time out of your day today to, to come and celebrate the life of my late great brother, Mark. Before I start, I just would like to thank everybody from around the country, the the support that we have received has been so overwhelming that I don't even know where to start. Mark was so loved. I just wish Mark knew this while he was still alive. <laughs> there are so many people that put their lives on hold and, and made today happen and, and supported us through this. Um, and there's so many people, and if I start to name everybody, we'll be here for three hours. And, I know that's the last thing anybody wants, is to be here for three hours. But for my family, learn, thank you for everything. Thank you for being our mother. Thank you for everything you did for us over the lives. Mark did love you. I loved you. He was on the way back to you. Archie, Debbie, I don't know how I can do this without you. You're the best family anybody can have. And I treasure you guys. Michelle. I don't know what I'd do without you, the battle axe. <laughs> but you really pushed the whip and made everything happen. Pastor Tony, thank you for, for being here today and mostly for what you did to, for my brother. I know my brother loved you too, very much. You were a very, very good influence in his life. Just wished he had stayed around longer to let it permeate more. I'd like to thank the Crossing Church, everyone for their love and support. Uh, Tony, you know, you've, you've been with us <laughs> my whole life almost, and um, I couldn't do stuff without you, Tony. Sean and your family, Wayne and your family, Stacy, Lisa, Jenny, the Rainbow Tennis, our beautiful harpist, um, Sandra and Louise for these beautiful flowers. They're really beautiful. I'd like to thank the Four Ways Vet for looking after Mark's baby so well. Um, the good news is the baby's well. Um, it's been looked after, and she will join the others soon. I'd like to thank Dr. Irvin Corza of Valenda Pirates and Dr. Mr. Kaiser Mateong of Kaiser Chiefs for their representation here today and their support. Um, I'd like to thank everybody that donated. Gavin Farigis and the Springbok Rugby Legends Fund, thank you for all your support. Gav, you're a hero, and we love you for what you do to honor sporting heroes in this country, Gav. 
Mark is my brother, and I've probably known him longer than most people in this room. We grew up together. I knew everything about Mark. And most people, anybody who actually knew Mark, knew Mark the way I did. This kind, caring, giving person. Nothing was ever too much for Mark and his friends, for the people that he loved. You know, we lived with my mother when we were young. My mother was a hairdresser. And uh, it obviously didn't wear off on Mark, because for the last two years, the hairstyles I've seen he'd been having, I mean, my mother would be turning in her grave, you know? <laughs> you know, my mother battled cancer for many years, and um, she eventually succumbed to it when Mark was just five. And it's had a profound effect on, on Mark, not five, 11, I mean. It's had a profound effect on Mark's life going forward. You know the bond that boys have with their mothers? My, my brother loved my mother, and it had a big effect on him going forward. As kids, believe it or not, I was the bully. For most of my childhood, I was bigger than him. Man. You wouldn't believe this stuff. <laughs> so, so he always used to run and hit me and then, and then run away. So I thought, oh, bugger okay, you, man. I went out, thought, you know, he was quick, Mark. Eh? He was a fast little guy. So he hit me the one day and he ran. So I picked up, took my shoe off, and I threw it at him. But of course he ducked straight through the place past window. Who gets, who gets the hiding? Not Marky, the little angel. I get the hiding, you know? <laughs> Mark was a born sportsman. He had a God-given gift. He could pick up any ball sport and he sell. I mean, he, he, even when soccer was only semi-professional and he decided to pursue it, he could have played springboard rugby or even tennis. He was a fly-off of note. He could pinpoint a drop goal or penalty from almost anywhere on the pitch. Sorry, Nas. But it's funny in life our roles get reversed. My younger brother then became my hero, my protector, and he always looked out for me. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't go anywhere without people knowing where I was and that I was safe. That was Mark. But Mark was no angel, believe me. Past few years, my brother kind of lost his way. And he went down the wrong path. And during this time is when he pushed me away, along with a lot of his close friends. Mark and I have been estranged for nearly three years now over some stupid argument which escalated. We are on the verge of reconciling, and we were planning to meet and talk soon. And then I got that call last Monday night. If you know, three years ago, we buried my dad. And my dad had a terrible disease called Huntington's disease. It's a brain-wasting disease that affects your movements, and not only that, more importantly, affects your mental state. I always knew this, and anybody that knew Mark, have you ever tried to have a conversation with him on the phone? You'll be dealing with 10 topics at once, and you won't even get through to one. You don't even know. You'll just put down the phone and say, yeah, yeah, Mark. It's, it's, yeah. I hear you, Mark. Go, what the hell did he say? You know? It was always like that. You know, his mannerisms were always all over the place. Mark knocked everything over. He smashed glasses. He broke chairs. It was just Mark. He couldn't sit still. But there's a reason for that. And that I only found out on Tuesday when my brother-in-law Archie informed me that he was informed. Three years ago, Mark was diagnosed with Huntington's. And for those of you who don't know, can explain a lot of his behavior. And I'm not, I'm not making excuses for him, but it's, it explains a lot to me. You know, I love my brother more than anything. I, I do know he loved me, and I showed and enjoyed getting to know Pastor Tony over these past few days. He took my brother in on his wing years ago and supported him and mentored him. And the stories that you were telling me of this past week, Pastor Tony, it's, it's amazing to see how my brother was coming back to us. He was finding his way back to all of us. The scene of Monday night was horrific. And I don't wish that on anybody, anybody else. It had completely broken me. 
but I would not leave the scene until I knew my boot was safe. Once I got him out of the car, I was allowed to go to my brother and give him a kiss on his head. And at that moment, I knew that we were reconciled. I knew that we had found our peace. I knew I had my brother back, my brother that I, I knew all my life, my friend. I had him back. And I could sit, <laughs> say farewell to him. I'm a gushly brother on your next journey because your demons have finally left you alone. Even though I'm devastated, I don't want to hop on my brother's violent and tragic end because we had to celebrate his life. But the crime in this country is out of control and something needs to be done. Too many beautiful people are dying. What is being done about this? We have to do something. How many more funerals do we have to have before somebody does something? But my brother was a South African sporting legend. He was not just my brother, he was our brother. He wasn't my friend, he was our friend. He wasn't just my hero, he was our hero. I will treasure all the times, Mark, all the memories that we had growing up as children, the crazy times, the heartbroken times, the fun times, every moment that I was privileged to spend with you. I will treasure my heart. I love you, Mark. I always will. You will be, you'll be laid to rest with mom, dad, and your precious wire. Your wills are safe. Dakota has survived and is well, and she'll be reunited with her, her brother soon. And Marky, we will always look after your babies. We'll make sure they're always safe. Fly with the angels, my brother. You are now free. Thank you, Warren. Could I ask Archie, please, to come up? Thank you. Just getting my life sorted out here. Yes, I wear glasses. <laughs> Thank you to everyone who could make it here on this very sad day to say goodbye to our dear friend, Mark Batchelor. We are here to give him a fitting send off and to celebrate his life. But I just want to express how sad and angry I am at the way he was taken away from us. Murdered in cold blood is an obscenely, unnatural and grotesquely unacceptable way to die. He really didn't deserve to go that way and I really do hope that they catch the monsters who are responsible for this heinous crime. As I look around this room today, I'm reminded of what great friends Batch made over the years. People like Nigel McGurk, Jason Price, Cecil Mortimer, Pricey Faree, Mitch Groff, Philip Smith, Sean Tuner, Tony Miguel, Kevin Moody, Brendan Hannon, Clive Lowe, Neil and Mark Tovey, Ray Mort, and Warren DuPont. Just to mention a few. There were many, many more, but I mentioned you guys because you knew what an awesome guy Bat could be. You experienced the kind generous, caring, and funny side of Mark Batchelor. And some of you would have seen the batch who changed over time to someone you barely knew. The batch they heard about in the news who had been involved in an assault or a fight. His real friends didn't know this guy. The truth of the matter was, Mark made a lot of bad choices with the company he kept to the business dealings he made. And this caused him to lose contact with many of the people who cared about him the most. Over the last two years, I got to spend a lot of time with Mark, and I asked him why he had made the choices that he had. And he said he regretted the people he had hurt and ignored. He explained that after retiring from soccer and losing his Supersport contract, 
finances did become an issue. As many of you knew, Batch was an extremely proud man. It would bother him immensely to ask for help. This forced him to become even more isolated and antisocial, but still telling people that everything was fine. He said he had to survive, and the way he was living at the moment was only temporary. He was working on some great deals, and when they came off, he was going to buy some land, and him, his wolves, and his girlfriend, Sherry, and Pexy were leaving Joburg for good. Mark had become quite humble. The greatest joy in his life was spending time with Sherry, who he was planning to get engaged to, and walking his wolves, which he did every morning and every evening without fail, with Pexy, his friend. Batch would quite often ask me or Debs if our boys were playing soccer at Ramberg, then come down to watch them. He still had great interest in the game and would give me hell if I shouted or even raised my voices to them, saying, leave them alone, Arthur. They're doing their best, and I think they loved having Mark there because I couldn't give them cuck. Even when Harry, my eldest son, saw Mark at the gym, which was just about every day, he would say, you're looking great, H. How are your brothers? Send my love to Debs and Dad. Mark always had the greatest manners, forever asking how someone's mom or dad was or how the kids or wife were. He always made the effort with small but important gestures. But Mark's most defining attribute was his sense of humor. He could make fun out of any situation at any time with that distinctive laugh of his. Whether it was making a noise when Cecil or Pricey were just about to tee off, or punching me, Nigel, or Jason in the back if we were late or if we broke wind in the gym. I will never forget Batch, Batch's laugh, but that's just it with Batch. It was the good times and the happy memories that defined who he was, being a great friend, a good son, and a fragile, beautiful human being that I will remember the most. Batch, it was an honor to have been your mate and you will never be forgotten. Warren's asked me to read this. Hi, Cass. Hope all is well, and here's my message that I've tried to keep in short and to the point. Good afternoon, all, and please accept my apologies for not being with you today to pay tribute to our very dear friend and South African sporting icon, Mark Batchelor, but I'm unfortunately out of the country. I met Batchy for the first time in about 2011, and before long, we had not only become close friends, but he had also wormed his way into the hearts of our small but close family. I am not a man of many words, which made our friendship perfect, as Batch could talk for all of us. But our friend had a huge heart, was always willing to go out of his way to help. He was generous and he was kind. On his arm was tattooed the world's loyalty and honor. This is the badge that we knew, that we respected, and that we loved. To Warren and those loved ones close to Mark, please accept our deepest condolences. Rest in peace, my dear friend and brother. Kind regards, Charles Stransky. Guys, as you know, Mark was a sportsman, and I think he would rather have had cheers and tears. So can I please ask you all to stand up and please give a big round of applause to Mark Batchelor, the blonde bomber. Please take your seats. Thank you, Archie. Please turn your attention to the screens for a video tribute. Thank you. being a real positive impact in my life. I'd like to thank you for the good times that we shared and for the laughs and for everything that we spoke about together. Our soccer conversations, down to family and down to my studies. Thank you for always motivating me and for pushing me to strive to achieve my best and for always being there when I needed you in times of good and bad. I appreciate you and I hope you rest in peace. 
I greet you in the name of the Almighty. I am Lebungake, the former Lando Pirates player. To friends, football cycle, and the family at large, we have lost a great football soldier. Kindly receive my heartfelt condolences and may Mark's soul rest in eternal peace. God bless you all. I am Linda Butelezi. Um, I, I just want to pass this message to the family of Mark Bachelor. Mark Bachelor, to me, he was one of the greatest uh, striker in the country he has ever had. This is uh, Tabang Sibeko. I'd like to take this opportunity to actually send through a heartfelt uh, message sincere condolences to Macbachelor's family. Uh, indeed, it is a great loss to South African football. We've lost such a great uh, football legend. We, we, we hope that uh, God actually be with his family in these trying times and that he provides the necessary comforts. Uh, may his soul rest in peace. Hey, hello, uh, I'm Humphrey Mlwane. It, uh, it was a sad greatness uh, hearing about Bachelor's passing. Uh, it was a great loss to the nation, to the nation and to his family. I personally lost uh, a brilliant teammate and a friend. Uh, I respected uh, his uh, work ethics and commitment to the game. Uh, during our time, we, we, we created memories and, uh, and played good football, which I will cherish for the rest of my life. Uh, to my condolences to his family, and I pray that uh, his soul may find internal peace. Thank you. Hi, I'm Lagile Khwati, the former Lolo Pirate player. My condolences to Mark Bachelor's family and may his soul rest peacefully. Good day all. Coach Bedie, uh, sending my condolences to Batch family. Uh, it's a big loss for the nation and uh, for everyone in Africa. Uh, may his soul rest in peace. We're gonna miss you. Hi, my name is Piri Tsotezi, former Orlando Paris player. I would like to send my condolences to Mark Bachelor's family and friends. May his soul rest in peace. My condolences to the Bachelor family and friends for the tragic loss of a great person and a sporting icon. Basha, it's William. May you rest in peace, bud. Um, thank you for the great times, the great laughter, and the special memory shared. You'll be greatly missed. You take it easy, my bud. It is with great loss that I'm sending this message. Bidding farewell to our brother, Mark Bachelor. It was such a great honor to play alongside you. Even though you left us on a short notice, I would like to say to you, my brother, thank you for your contribution, not only at Kaiser Chiefs, but in the football fraternity in South Africa. We would like to say to you, may your soul rest in eternal peace we will always love and remember you. I thank you. Kevin Sibego, a yeah, super sports legend. Just want to send my sincerely condolences to the Bachelor family and say to the legend, may your soul rest in peace, my legend. Really sorry to about your death and your tragic passing. Deepest condolences to the family. I wish them well, and God give them strength in this tough time. I'll always remember you as a good teammate and good friend at Fitz University. We laughed and had great times together. Until we meet again, rest in peace. My bachelor was this a fun-loving character. That was always surrounded by his teammates, enjoying his funny stories. He was like a storyteller that will make everyone laugh. Echi, we spent so much time together. 
knew you for so long. There's so many things I'd like to share here and, and say about you today. But really all I want to say is thank you. Thank you for so many things. But in particular, thank you for your loyalty. Thank you for teaching me what real loyalty is. I will carry that with me forever. I want to thank you for your kindness. The truth is, to me and everybody else, you gave much more than you ever expected in return. Becky, I want to thank you for the person that you were, for the friend that you were, and the brother you were always to me. For now and forever, you will be in my heart and I will remember you forever. Thank you. I love you, brother. Hi, my name is Tawazan Mguni, former Mamelodi Sundowns defender. I would like to send my condolences to Mike Bachelor's family and may his soul rest in peace. This is Laki Maselesele, former Kaiser Chief striker. Well, I'm here to uh, uh, say a message about Batch. Uh, you know, he was my senior. There's a lot that I can say about him because he was a very uh, a bubbly guy, full of jokes. We've shared a lot of hilarious moments with him. Uh, but uh, one moment that I can remember is that, uh, you know, my, my first day when I joined the team, you know, he used to uh, make fun of me and say, how is this little man coming to take my position here at Kaiser Chiefs? Uncle Mark. I'm grateful for having the opportunity to have made such a strong, energetic, and quick-witted man like you that always had a positive outlook on life no matter where life took you. Thank you for being you, Uncle Mark. With your messy hair and a quirky smile, it will always be a memory that will remain in my heart forever. Always remember that even though you're flying high with the angels, you'll never be walking alone because here on earth you'll forever be by our sides. May you rest in peace. Love you, Uncle Mark. Mark, uh, this is a sad day for me and to the nation. Uh, you've been a good man, a good footballer, a friend and a colleague. Uh, we played together and I uh, used to enjoy uh, playing with you, more especially as a striking force. Uh, I remember one of the good days we played uh, uh, against Orlando Parade and we beat them 3 1. I scored a first goal and he scored a second goal. And we celebrated together and it was a lovely day. But for me now, it's so sad to hear your passing. I'd like to send my deepest sympathy to you, Mark, and your family. My words cannot fully express the sorrow that I feel right now about your passing. I will treasure the wonderful times that we had during our time at Kesa Chips. And my prayers are with you and your entire family. May your soul rest in peace, my friend. As we prepare to go and lay him to rest, I'd just like to give the words of comfort to his family to say, be strong, we are with you. The country is with you, Kaza Chiefs is with you, everybody actually is with you at this time of need. Uh, stay comfort with our words and uh, know that uh, he is going to a better place. Thank you very much. He will be sadly missed in the football fraternity. Go well, my brother, the blonde bomber. Till we meet again. And when we meet, we shall smile. I think uh, <clears throat> all the South African people who love football, who followed you, uh, they will understand and they will acknowledge that you played your part. My brother, you will be sorely missed. May your soul rest in peace. And condolences to the Bachelor family. 
look, my brother. How I would miss you. Fairly well, my brother. My bachelor. I will miss you. Thank you. And I would like to say to the Mark Bachelor's family, um, in our Zulu a phrase, we said, Rest in peace, my brother. God will always be with you and your family and the family of football people. Mark Williams, will you come and say a few words, please? Uh, good morning, everyone. To the Betts, to uh, Betts family, Warren's family, um, from the soccer legends, uh, dear condolences. About a month ago, actually, uh, me and Bats, we met at Four Ways. And he says to me, Williams, when are we going for a coffee? Now, Bats wanted, always invited me for a coffee. And I said, listen here. Now, Sean Bartlett is sitting there. You know, they used to go to the gym. <clears throat> now, in Cape Town, we have two different type of colors, the English one, Afrikaans. And I said to him, Bats, if you want to have a coffee, you have a coffee with Bachelor. For me, we go for a drink. And we used to laugh and things like that. And um, we had started actually um, as a football player. I came to Swallows. I was on a short holiday coming from overseas, actually. And um, we were camping in Boxburg. And Betts was also playing for Swallows. And all the players, there were two in a room. But I was only one in a room because I had this type of contract that I wanted nobody to sleep with me because I wanted always my lights to be on and bats wanted lights off. <laughs> so the people during, we have a, uh, while we're eating, and some of the guys were saying to bats, listen here, do you know this guy here? He's only one in the room and bats didn't like that. For that, bats was no. So I come for dinner there and I'm looking and I'm like, I wonder why this, this guy is looking at me so weird. And um, I thought, let me have a chat with him. And I went to him, I said, listen here, Bet. Um, I said, um, do you have a problem? He said, yeah, I believe you're sleeping uh, alone in a room. I said, yeah, but listen here. If you play overseas, maybe you can also get one room for yourself. <laughs> but what a kind heart, a lovely person we met on golf, me and the Toby brothers, Sean Bartlett. We just played, went to the club. And uh, of course, one of the times um, we came from Durban and Bet said to me, Williams, some of my weights are waiting for me. We have to go to town. Now I'm like, that's town. We just came from Durban. You know, relax. He said, no, listen here. Let's go. We went to the club. There was a club in town. I went in there and I saw people dancing on the mics and things like that. It was a rave club. First time I was in a rave club. Pat started taking his shirt off him. I'm like, hey, what's wrong, brother? And he started dancing in the corner and I'm looking at what's scared for me. But those were the times we had. <laughs> Now, uh, I've been playing overseas, coming back, and how's it, Betsy? How's it, my boyki? Now he's starting to call me boyki. I said, no, I'm fine, I'm fine. How are you doing, Betsy? Now everything is fine. He says to me, listen, I need you to go with, uh, go with me. My brother Warren is opening a, a, a Vodacom shop. But please, Williams, don't start stealing the phones now. <laughs> I think a good times that I had with Betsy was when, um, we played for Kaiser Chiefs. And um, eventually we then end up in one room. And uh, always the night before the game, you know, uh, I was one of those guys that liked to go out and have a drink and just visualizing. And Bats is laying here next to me and I'm saying, Bats, listen here, tomorrow is a big game. You know, we're playing Pirates. But then there was a guy called Asus. He was a defender. He kicked anything that moved. And me and Betts is having a conversation. It's about half past nine after dinner. And I said to Betts, listen here, the first tackle, I want to make sure you must go and Betts said, Williams, leave it for me. All right? I said, you fine? 
I put on my clothes. I'm getting out. You say, wait, 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 Boyki, where are you going? We're playing tomorrow. I said, Bet, you must sleep. I'm going out. He said, you can't go out, man. We're playing tomorrow. But I said, no, don't worry, man. I'm, you know, I need to go out. He wasn't happy. <laughs> Anyhow, off I went to Rosebank. I think as I came to Rosebank, uh, some of his friends were there. And they phoned Bet. I said, Bet, what is Williams doing here? Are you guys not playing? He said, hey, Lord, I colored you. He, he just wants to be out. I can't do nothing. So come, we play now. And during that time in the game, I said to I said to Bets, Bets, listen here, don't forget the conversation we had. But as I come in about half past one in the morning, right? We're playing now Pirate Chiefs, FNB Stadium. I look, you know, the crowd there, and I see a nice little white crowd. You know, Bets has had his own fans, the brothers, and they, they were all sitting there. And I said, Hey Bets, I see you got your mate. So I said to him, Don't forget now. And the first thing you need to do, you need to hit this oak. He said, Williams, leave it for me. As we're playing, playing, I look at Bets. After five minutes, we disappear, and I, I touch a bet. Did you get him? He said, Williams, as I turned around, I just saw an elbow going there. He hit me off the ball. I said, don't worry. Leave it for me. Now, Neil Toby was our captain, actually, sitting there. I said, Tobes, if you get the ball, play it on the other side. So Toby got the ball. He played it to the pirate side because that side was pirates fans, and we were running. And here this guy comes. And as he tackled me, but I got his hand like this, but we're rolling. I never knew I had a punch like that with a left, and I hit him, twa, twa, twa. And he was jumping out. I said, well, don't forget, uh, you got bets. <laughs> and um, for some of you who don't know, actually, bets, bets got married. Yeah, yeah, bets got married. And I said, when I, while I was playing overseas, I came back. I thought, if I can take bets overseas with this good heart he had, and he had a big heart, believe me, a good heart and a big heart. And he got married um, in Pine Slope, not far away the, where the incident happened. And I said to Bess, listen here, tomorrow we're going to China. I'm going to be your agent. He looks at me and says, Boyki, you my agent? I said, I'm going to be your agent. Don't worry, I'll buy the tickets, everything. Organize the visas. We're drinking there at Toby's place. At 8 o'clock, we have to take our flight. I went to go pick 12 o'clock. I picked up because there's six hours difference, sorry. I picked up the visas, everything. I, I got bets at the airport. All his mates were there, hey, bets, bye, bye. Right. Now I got business class. So I went to the lady there, I supervised, I said, listen here. My, my friend is going for big trials. He can't sit in business class. Is there any way you can upgrade this? She looks he like, okay, let me see. Now my head was so bachelor's head was so I bought I bought a Nando chicken. A hot, hot Nando chicken. And I'm I'm, I'm looking at bets. I said, don't worry, boy, we, we we covered. So as we're going in the said, sorry, you upgraded to first class. Hey, me and Bets walking into first class. Looking big, big. I said, you need to sleep, don't worry. But now I'm I'm having the Nando chicken. I'm opening the lady came, she said, sorry, sir. In first class, you're not allowed to eat Nando chicken. You must put it in the, in the toilet. I said, can I eat that? She said, yeah, sure, but in the toilet. I went to the toilet, got the chicken out there, me eating. <laughs> I'm in first class now. I'm coming back, Betsy is sitting there. Looks at me, he says, how was the chicken? I said, no, it's fine. Yo, you, you, you can't, you know, nice food, everything. And um, two hours later, Betsy looks to me, he says to me, Mark, is this, the left of the, uh, is this the left of the chicken? I said, yeah, in the toilet. He went to the toilet and finished it out of half. <laughs> so, uh, it's a sad day for me because we had such a lot of memories. But why are we going to China now, being his agent? I said to Bats, Bats, it's very cold. In, it's very, we're going to Korea, it's very cold there. Bats love these shorts. He says, Mark, don't worry, Boyki, I'm sorted. Go the first day in Korea. Bet with the swords, I'm warm, packed. I said, Bet you're fine. No, I'm fine. But I can see he's not fine. Train, train. I took him off the training. We went out, karaoke. Second day, karaoke. Third day, I said, Listen, now we're going to go to the club because I think you got your contract. And the problem is, just before that, he's got a call from Sundowns. He was playing now at Sundowns. And they said to Bet, Listen here, you need to come back to South Africa because we need you. And I'm like, Bet, don't go. Please stay here, man. He said, Mark, you know what? My heart is there, and you know, I got married, and uh, I said, okay, listen, if you want to go, but let's go out for the club. Went out to the first club. As we went in, like bets, 
walking. The security stopped me. Went into the second club. The security stopped me. Now, in Korea, I was surprised. Why are they stopping me? And he's walking. He's, he looks at me and said, Williams, the next club we go, you just walk. If anybody stops you, something's going to happen. Ah, I've got it. Bats walk down the stairs. I'm behind Bats. As we go down, they stop me again. Five guys from Korea came. And they looked. I said, yeah, why are you looking? What are you laughing for? Now, I know I've got Bats here. and <laughs> Believe me, in Korea. And um, I said to the guy, come up, man. Come up, you, you're laughing, but it's about six, six, six Korea guys. But I was, I didn't wear a sense of humor. So as I walked a little bit, I'm gonna walk a little bit away, but I was like just doing ha ah, like this, and this guy kicked me. <laughs> I flew to the back. I said, Bets, did you see what they did? Bets were laughing, they're on his knees. He's, three went that way, three went that way. He said to me, Wait, Williams, they're gonna come back. Now in Korea, there's four roads. We're sitting behind sort of electric box. He said, Wait, wait, they're gonna come. We're waiting, we're waiting. About 10 minutes, we hear they come. Oh, you know what? Shalang, chong, shalang, shalang. He said, wait, Williams, you quicker than me. You, I'm jumping excited. Miss the one guy. As I miss the one guy, comes to bed, flat and down. So I'm jumping on this guy. I said, Bets, go catch the others. So the next day in the newspaper, they said they're looking for a blonde lady and a black guy. <laughs> So yeah, just last week when I when I got you know I've got such a lot of stories to be tell, but um, you know he was a good person. Um, we went to many times. Just our other friend James Small. The other day also I went to his funeral, and I was a national beach soccer coach, and I thought I need a, a, a strong oak, because I've got all these guys from Durban, Small Oaks. I said, Bet, would you run to play for the South African Nets, um, beach soccer team? He said, Williams, you know, I can't run a muscle. I said, don't worry, you don't need to run. All I need you to do is just use your physical presence. Okay. First day, I give the exercise, bed start pulling our hamstring. <laughs> <laughs> Off we went, same small, and bets. they're talking now. Good mates. Bets, listen here, we're going to do this. Now I'm listening. I said, James, wait. May his soul reach in peace also. I said, listen here, Bats has got a big end tomorrow. Whatever you got planned, it's not going to happen tonight. Maybe tomorrow after the game. James picked me up with a chair. He didn't like it. I almost felt him and Bats start ending up fighting over me now because Bats didn't like that also. But nevertheless, as we went off to the hotel, I said to Bats, Bats, listen here, you had enough now. He said to me, no, Mark. So I'm trying, we're trying. I said, the security must try and push him in. He stands like this at the hotel. Nobody can push me. I said, okay, but only for one hour you're coming with me. After which you're going to sleep. Okay, Williams. Of went to the club. Now, as we come in, we're sitting, and it's like, Williams, that guy's looking at me, and I knew trouble is coming. <laughs> now, I'm like, Bet, which guy? That guy there. That guy's looking at me. I said, Bet, he's not looking at me. He's looking for the other lady. It's not you. Now, he's looking at me. And now, the guy comes on the floor, flat with a flat hand on the floor. And uh, those were the things, but um, all I can say to Warren, because when I heard the news, we were actually at Sun City. Um, you know, and I thought, I'm not going to cry because Bats wouldn't want me to cry because he always used to call me Boyki. And um, just last week, now Bats always used to say to me, Mark, have you seen my new girlfriend? He showed me this. I said, she's 21. Yes, 21. And last week, um, he introduced me to um, a lady. He said, this is my, my, my girlfriend and um, at Four Ways. And um, we must go for a coffee. I said, you remember, Sean, you take for a coffee, me, you take out for a drink. And then when I heard that news that he was shot, you know, and things like that, I couldn't believe it. And um, he wouldn't want me now to come and sit there and cry. And I'm being strong because for the family, because that was bad. That was bad. You know, I had some quality, quality time with him. Good heart. Met all his friends. You know, the guys with the tattoos. Sometimes I was scared because I don't like tattoos. But um, Bats used to love the tattoos. And um, for, for the family of, of, of Bats, for letting him into the football world. We appreciate each and every moment that we had with him. And um, he will surely be missed from the soccer people fraternity, myself also as a brother, because you know, when he calls me boy key and you know, take me to the gym with Ray Mort in the morning, five o'clock in the morning, these guys go to gym. So um, I went with them once and that was the first and the last time. But um, that's, yeah, what I can say, boy, um, I had some good times with you, 
we went out early morning, late nights, crazy things, and um, I'm, I'm gonna miss you, and may your soul rest in peace, my boy, Ki. Thank you, Mark. You said he had to choose between you and Sean. He clearly chose Sean, because Sean and I and Batch had a few coffees, but we never had a coffee with you. <laughs> I'd like to call Edward Matale, please, to come say a few words. Good afternoon, everybody. Mm. Thanks, every, everyone, family, and yeah, protocol observed. I, 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 I won't be long like Mark, because uh, everything has been already said about my friend. I'll just cut and paste few things that have been said from the audio and Mark. Uh, my friend Mark, the first time uh, we get to know each other, it was when he joined Orlando Pirate. And then uh, already we had a couple of whites in the team, uh, Mark Fish, Gavin Lane, and Mark, when he joined us, with his hairstyle. <laughs> and then uh, I asked him, I said, uh, are you white? Because the white that I'm having here, they don't look like you. <laughs> and Mark always had uh, these answers. He had answer for everything. And then he said, yeah, you know, Eddie, Mark and Gavin, Mark is a tomato, and I'm a, I'm a sauce, I'm a tomato sauce. So I couldn't find out why Mark is tomato, he's tomato sauce. So basically he was trying to tell me that the Mark is raw and he's, he's the final product. <laughs> but anyway, we, we had good time, Back was the lethal striker. He scored beautiful goals. When he was needed most, he took us to Africa. He, make, he made us want the star, we won the league locally. Uh, and Mark was very superstitious. Every game, he scored a goal. He, he loved me to, to go with him, have a drink somewhere around Bedford View. And, uh, but driving with him, we stop all the way. Because every time he sees an ambulance or he hear a siren, he'll stop on the side and do these funny things. <laughs> I say, Mark, what's wrong? He sees a white cat passing, Mark, he'll stop. <laughs> we do. The whole day will be, yeah. You broke a glass in the club, he's, he go to the side. We, <sighs> okay. But I adjusted to that because he was my friend. The, the funniest part was Pirate, we, we were playing carpet football, uh, meaning we keep the ball on the ground. For those who don't know football, we call it carpet football. Mark was strong aerially. Aerially will, will win anything and will score goals aerially. But uh, he couldn't. He couldn't get a steady lineup because on a carpet he was not okay. <laughs> With our language, we said "benga kumnand." So, but I saw potential. I saw potential in Mark. I said, "Oh, this white man," because at one stage I was his captain, and I needed win, win, win. So I said, "Mark, let's make a deal." He said, what deal? He said, okay. 
because I'm a good cross of the ball. Every time I'll go, they make sure I'll give a cross. But if you touch one of my crosses, is 50 bucks. Whether it's a flick, is a goal, or no goal, 50 bucks. Then we signed that contract. But I went furthermore. I said, I'll also talk to Hellman because he was on the right wing and Brendan Silent. Both of them, any cross you get from them is 25 bucks. So mine is 50, those is 25, but don't talk to them. I'll go and negotiate. And that's how I made money out of Besh. <laughs> because obviously I wasn't earning a lot, you know. Color, yeah. You know, whites were, were still earning more than us. You know, but it was okay, we had fun, and I made a lot of money because I made a point that every, every game I must go and make those crosses so that I can get extra cash, and then we go out, we, we drink, uh, yeah, and then we had fun, he, and he'll still buy drinks for me, him and fish at Gavin Lane. So, and then we went, we went Africa, we won the star, and uh, he contributed a lot. And then, uh, but the funniest part is that uh, during our interchange room, there's such certain tradition or rituals that we do. And then uh, we do it in Zulu. And then, uh, is, uh, you know, before you, you, you do interview or whatever TV, you go for makeup. So it was the same setup. Before the game, in the change room, we have our makeup artist. So, our juju man. So we go in there and then we are queuing. And as we are queuing, you don't have to look back. Once you are in the queue, you are not allowed to look back until you finish with your makeup. And then I, I said, okay. I say, Mark, you know what? Because you're not, sh you're not sh sure with the, the wedding. So let me come behind you. And let's start at the back, at the back of the queue, so that you can keep rehearsing as we approach the makeup artist. And then, so the simple word was, they, they, they put powder on your left eye, which you say, umbone. And they put on the right, you say, Ungamoni. But I don't know how to explain it in English. Uh, maybe somebody can help us. So they put powder here and there. So as we were walking, Umbon, Ungamon. And then I was whispering, Umbon, Ungamon, so that he mustn't forget. Umbon, Ungamon. And he was also doing, Ungamon. <laughs> so as we get to the powder, I, I don't know, something just shut off. And Mark, and Mark, he just turned and said, hey, Eddie, I say, Papa, you don't have to look back, you don't. And the makeup is, artist was watching. And he said, but what must I say now? I say, you know, Mark, just do it in your mother tongue, in your language, simple. See me now, see me no more. And then, <laughs> and then it just went and says, see me now, see me no more. <laughs> and we nearly lost the game, we drew, and we were called for DC, because he wasn't supposed to look back, and then the wedding was totally wrong. But uh, yeah, we got fine, and then he, he paid for the fine, obviously, <laughs> for both of us. <laughs> so yeah. And then we, we, we went across, went to Supersport, and then we went to, they took us somewhere in the bush, you know, Supersport then was dominantly white, lot of money, they took us somewhere for pre-season, very deep white suburb in, in Salamea, this side of Natal. And then, yeah, we just got there, eat, and do nothing, basically had fun. So 
but we had a curfew whereby we were, we were supposed to sleep. Tell it to everybody in the room. And then it was boring, and I told Fish, uh, not Fish, uh, uh, Mark, I said, friend, it's boring here. Yeah. What can we, how can we entertain ourselves? And then we decided that uh, he went to negotiate with Terry Payne and get the car, uh, the Kumbi keys. Every time when the other guys, they go uh, for KFU, 10 o'clock, myself and Bash, we were driving out. Went to the, we went to the club, hey, we were boogieing. Hey, he's a good dancer. You, if you don't know, he can dance, man. Yeah, he danced. Yeah, but the rhythm was not up to scratch, but he can, he, he can, he can. Yeah, we danced. That was Tuesday, we went out. Wednesday, we went out. Thursday, Friday. Aish. These Africans, guys, they were, they were there, and they start talking Africans about me. Because it's dominantly, because they were not sure whether I was uh, my best driver <laughs> or he was my bodyguard. Because he was huge, I was thin. So, and they start talking rubbish. They're about uh, in Africa. Chicken, what, 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 what? And then they thought we, we don't know, we can't, we don't know Africans. And Bash had them. And he told me, said, hey, my friend, these people, they take a chance. I said, no. You know, every game, you, you must have a, a game plan. And then we, I said, no, no, it's two of them. I'll take the lighter one. That, that light one, I can, I can deal with him. You take that other one. And then, yeah. And that's how it goes. And I was so excited because that was the first time I, I punched a white man. <laughs> and I, I, I realized that, ah, democracy is here. <laughs> so, yeah, we really had fun, but yeah. That's the type of a friend I had. And yeah, all these years we've been chatting. Yeah, all along chatting, chatting, and yeah. And then uh, even when I saw him with TV, every time he'll talk to me, I'll talk to him. Yeah, uh, but he did, he did great. Uh, yeah, all I can say, yeah, we've been robbed, uh, our hero, but uh, this is beyond our control. There's nothing much we can do. It's only God knows. Yeah, let's leave everything to God. Uh, hopefully I know from today he's going to his resting place and he's gonna have a good rest. And uh, we, it's just the flesh. The spirit will always be amongst us. And we, uh, we know all he did for pirates, super sport, Kaiser Chiefs. He was a great man. And uh, all I can say to my friend, I said, uh, may his soul rest in peace. Yeah. And then uh, we'll take it from there. Thank you. Thank you, Edward. I thought you said you were going to be shorter than Mark. <laughs> you, um, you footballers are also think that you preachers, eh? <laughs> you know, whenever Batch used to joke with me that one day he's going to take my job, I said, never. You're not. You're too ugly. <laughs> Prof Schloss, would you please come and say a few words? Thank you. Um, you know, it's been quite an eye-opener. And listening to the testimonies about Batch brings back very, very vivid memories of the man. And I think we can be proud to have known him and experience what Mark Williams and them have said, because that was Batch in, tr in the true tradition. To the football family, the friends, the relatives.
The football family today has an opportunity to reflect on the life of a man who walked a path less traveling in football. I say this because Batch belongs to an exclusive category of players. And why do I say that? Because he's played for three of the country's top clubs, Orlando Pirates, Sundowns, and Kaiser Chiefs, and in no particular order. Now, not many people have done that. This alone speaks to volumes of the talent of Batch on the football field, And we know in football that to wear an Orlando Pirates jersey is hard, but to go on to play for Sundowns and for Kaiser Chiefs is special. And again, not many people have done that. <laughs> Batch also belongs to another special list of only a few players in our country who've played, I think it is in the States, and after his stint there, which is interesting, his father approached um, Najib Kamarudin, who was then the chairman of Dynamo's football club, requesting a trial for his son. And guess what? Batch landed up playing for Dynamo's and won the JPS, which was one of the tournaments at that time, and then after that joined the Lander Pirates. Now, Batch's success continued. He was part of the historic Orlando Pirates team that won the league in 1994. He was also part of that historic Orlando team that won the CAF championship, ba barely a year into our democracy in 1995. And in 1996, he was part of the Pirates team that won the CAF Super Cup. No mean achievement. I don't think there are many players who've won that many honours in their short uh, period of playing football. It is fair, therefore, to say, today we are here to reflect and even celebrate the life of a person who had very special talents in football, where he excelled not only on, at senior level, but also while he was still at school. He represented the district of Southern Transvaal and won the national tournament for under 12s in 1981. And an interesting picture, I think it, I saw it, uh, it was screened today, who the players were there. Quite a few of them, I think, six of them landed up playing in the National Soccer League eventually. Now, Batch traveled a lot. Amongst other clubs, Batch played for Wits, Morocco Swallows and Super Sp Supersport United. So he, he played for virtually seven clubs that had played in, in the league, which was quite an achievement as well. Jack Batch was an achiever. He moved to seven clubs. Again, I don't think many players have done that. I'm also told that Batch was a talented rugby player, but he chose to play soccer at a time when it not, wasn't really fashionable for people from his area or background to play soccer. And being white, a lot of people shunned that. This therefore speaks of a man who was always keen to walk his own path in life. He made up his mind and he, that was what he was going to do. I used to run Wits University in the 90s and Batch played there. And have many memories of Batch breaking our hearts with his diving headers and tapping finishes that made him in those days a deadly striker. But what I remember from Batch is whenever there was a skirmish, and I, I tried one day to stop a fight in, in the st our stadium, and Batch ran up and he said, Ronnie, get out the way lifted me up, my feet were dangling in the air, pushed me out the way and got involved and sorted out everything in his own way. <laughs> so talking didn't make mean a thing. <laughs> I remember his weird celebrations. I remember his irritations at those who often put him in the box. He transcended race and embraced different cultures. And we've heard that today. 
Batcher identified himself as a football player first and foremost. Everything else was secondary to him in those days. Football was his life. We all know of his knack to score goals, but we also knew of his short temper on the field, which often led to quarrels with referees, other players, and so on. And Batch was suspended and had his name taken on many a an occasion. To his credit, though, he would often bury the hatchet with the referee after the match and the opposition with that mischievous smile that only Batch could muster. Former teammate um, George Durnley reminded us this past week that Batch was both feisty and committed on the field. But he was also part of the first generation of footballers who mastered the art of negotiating a better deal for himself in the transfer market. As I said, he moved around to seven clubs. I suspect this explains why he was so nomadic in life, often changing teams. He started his career as a striker, but went on to be a defender. When, and this is the only, my suspicion, when the goals were dying up and he needed to adapt. Batch was an adaptive footballer who understood the changing times. He adapted to suit the occasion. And in conclusion, I think it's fitting that th there is this large crowd here that we've heard all the stories of his life from ex-players, of what a man he was and respected by the sporting fraternity, both in the soccer arena and both in the rugby e e arena. The football family today conveys its heartiest con condolences to the Batch family during this difficult times. Thank you. Thank you. Lastly, I call up Vina Mposa, please to come say a few words. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and thanks, uh, Pastor, and the congregations and, uh, for the opportunity granted not to me, but to Kaiser Chiefs Football Club. And I'm delighted uh, to hear and see as well the colleagues that are gathered here. Our coach, Sean Bartlett, is in the house. I've seen, uh, of course, everybody saw Mark Williams. Neil Toby is here, and uh, Mark Toby the legend himself is in the house. And I'd like to also acknowledge the fact that some of our colleagues in football, Brad George is here from Bidvest uh, Club and uh, Bidvest Vets, and uh, others that I might not have seen. I'm not qualified to stand before you. The legends that have spoken and the ones that I've mentioned are the ones that are qualified to speak. But I'm here on behalf of Kaiser Chiefs, representing Ntatemutaung uh, himself, our chairman, who has asked me to read his message. I'll read it verbatim. I will not obviously uh, skip even a word or try to juxtapose or paraphrase some of his wedding. But to the family, Warren and everybody else, and uh, Mitch, uh, who has been in contact with the club. The message, when it came to the club, it became a shock to everybody uh, at our offices in Naturena. Mr. Mutaun says, I must pass this message. He says, dear family, we are saddened by the news of Mark Bachelor's passing. We are still reeling with shock from the news that befell the country on that fateful night on Monday, 15 July 2019. It is indeed a sad moment for the Bachelor family and their friends. 
It will never be comprehensible to lose a loved one. May God give your family the courage and strength to bear the loss. It is a tragic uh, time indeed. I wish to join the masses and express our heartfelt condolences for the family. Poetically, we learn from holy sonnets by John Donne that death be not proud, thou some have called thee mighty and dreadful, for thou art not so. One shot sleep past, we wake eternally, and death shall be no more. Death, thou shalt die. You have lost an important branch in the family tree. Mark represented the family through his exploits on the field of play, as obviously everybody had uh, testimonies from his uh, teammates. He ran his race in life and on the field. He mesmerized the defenders and tormented goalkeepers during his football career. Remarkably, Mark played for arguably the top teams in South Africa. It takes a distinguished individual to don the jersey of Kaiser Chiefs, Orlando Pirates, Mamelodi Sundowns, Verts, Morocco Swallows, Super Sport, and uh, Dynamos. A big tree has fallen indeed. I can think of no better tribute than to share Maya Angelou's wonderful poem, When Great Trees Fall. When great trees fall, rocks on distant hills shudder, lions hunker down in tall grasses, and even elephants lumber after safety. We can be, be and be better, for they existed. Mark played a part in the history of Kaiser Chiefs. We were looking for a player with a strong physique who could hold up the ball up front he was a real fighter. He was like a bull. Normally, defenders will bully a striker. However, that was different with Mark. He would bully defenders. That is uh, Kaiser Chiefs chairman in Tatemotaung. He continues in closing to say, we called him Batch, or Batch, as we affectionately uh, known him. He joined us during the 97-98 season and would remain at the club until the early part of 1999-2000 season. I remember when he made his debut for us on the 24th of September 1997 in a 1-0 league win over Santos, and it was a away game. Coincidentally, he made his last appearance for Kaiser Chiefs in a 3-1 league win at home over the same Santos team that uh, he played on his debut. That was on the 23rd of October 1999, before leaving Amakosi during the 99-2000 season. His, his is a career well spent at Chiefs. Batch played in 62 games in all competitions for us, scoring 15 goals for the club, winning two Rothman's Cups, and I saw on the visuals here showing Dr. Kumar and Batch in Rothman's Cup uh, t-shirts or jerseys. Who would forget his role in that strong attacking trio alongside uh, Poland and Zanya and the late Tabang Lebesi in the 1998-99 season, with the three scoring a combined 51 goals in all competitions. That's a mean feat, and it shows uh, that uh, Mark uh, played a very uh, splendid uh, uh, career or part in the history of Kaiser Chiefs. Farewell, Mark. On behalf of Kaiser Chiefs, I wish to express my deepest heartfelt condolences to the bereaved family, friends, and football fraternity. Mark is no more, but he will be resurrected to live peacefully amid angels. May his soul repose peacefully, and to say to Mark and the family, um, let Mark go well, farewell to him and to the family to be strong under these trying times, and um, we are reeling as Kaiser Chiefs uh, family. We're going to play this weekend in the Soweto Derby, and I'm sure Mark will be looking at that match and say, I played for these two wonderful teams and let football be the winner. We wish him well in his uh, new life. He is gone, but he will never be forgotten. And legends don't die, they multiply. Thank you very much.
Thank you. The rainbow tenors are going to sing while we watch a video highlight. Thank you. Before we sing our last song, uh, one last short story. I was at the boxing gym this week, running on the treadmill, and there was a guy running next to me that knew that Batch was in our church. And he said, uh, you know, I said Batch had been in our church for the last four years. And uh, to which he said, you know, going to church once a week doesn't atone for your sins. I wanted to say, well, you're such a clown, but uh, being such a gentle pastor, I didn't. I just thought that. <laughs> but uh, I said to him, you know, you're right. It's amazing how everyone is a church expert. Um, I usually mind my own business when I'm in the gym. But now that you want to talk church, let's talk church. Running along him next to me, I said, you're right. Going to church doesn't atone for your sins. But Jesus died on the cross. And that's what atones for your sins. And that's what Batch did. He put his faith in Jesus, not in himself. He knew, as I said, he would respond regularly because he knew he needed mercy and redemption.
And so I said, yeah, go to church doesn't atone for your sins. Jesus dying on the cross did. To which he said, you know, you're right. I said, I know I'm right. I re I've read the book. And once again, the word clown came into my head, but uh, I didn't say, say anything. But uh, Batch did. He put his faith in his Savior. My daughter, uh, my, my family, and these guys all were very fond of him and knew him. I was at my daughter's house maybe two days after he was murdered. And she said to me, Karina said to me, Dad is Batch in heaven. So I looked at my daughter, I looked at her husband, and I looked at my two little granddaughters, and I said, if he's not in heaven, there's no hope for us. He is with his Savior, and we celebrate him today. Won't you stand together with us as we sing our last song? Thank you.
pall bearers to please come and take their place. Warren in the front, and then Archie, Alan, Sean, Pexy, Harry, and Mark. And if the legends can please form a God of honor, thank you. and pray could I ask you to let uh, the pallbearers go out with the body and then if you could peel from the front out Lord we commend our brother Mark to you today let all of us who trust in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ the Lord bless you and keep you the Lord to make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you the Lord lift, lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace both now and and forevermore. Amen. Oh. 